First part of this lesson, we started learning about the musical element of melody and the adjective form of the word melodic. Um, and we also talked about MIDI instruments and how the QWERTY keyboards on our computers can serve as an input um, to create sounds, uh, pitches, musical notes on the computer. So the next step to complete this project is you're going to take your improvisations, the ideas that you develop just exploring, um, and actually record that as a baseline. So here are the steps to go through this. So if we add, uh, click on Play the Synth, go to Guitar, Guitar and Bass, and find a bass guitar sound that you like. If you want to use an 808 you can, but you can explore other sounds. This is one that I like. Yep, that'll work. And you can use the, the arrows around this octave button if you want to make the sound higher. Before bass, probably want to keep it a low sound. Now the next thing you want to do is find a drum loop that you can play along with. So I'm going to select drums, I'll go for rock, and I have some favorites marked already. And if you double click on the loop, it should add it uh, into the workspace. The default setting is it typically will add the loops as eight bars. But for my recording, I only want to do four. So I'm going to come up to the cycle bar and put my cursor on the right edge. And then I'm going to click and drag to the left so that it's just covering four bars. Then I'm going to come down to my drum loop and put my cursor in the upper right hand corner of the region and click and drag to the left for the loop. Now these next steps are important. Down here at the bottom center of the window this is the metronome on off button sometimes called a click track. You want to make sure that this is turned on. Next to the on off button is a gear that will show you your metronome settings. You can change the sound of the metronome click, you can adjust the volume, and you also have this count in. This is important when you are recording into the DAW. You want to make sure this is set at two bars. Now before you start recording, you should have spent some time just improvising some bass lines to go along with the drum. You don't have to use a lot of notes, and the notes don't have to move very fast. Or they could. But you just want to come up with an idea. When you have an idea that you're ready to save, then we're going to record. But actually what's happening, because we're working with MIDI, this is not real sound with real instruments, but we're just inputting data into the DAW. When we work with the Patterns Beatmaker and we were clicking on boxes to create drum beats, we were working with MIDI. And we were creating the sounds by taking our mouse and clicking on different parts of the box. This type of entry of MIDI data is what's called step entry methods. By recording our baseline, 
as if we're playing the instrument, this is what's referred to as real-time entry, meaning we're entering the data as it's actually happening in time. This is usually a much quicker way to enter the data, even though it is a little more difficult to be rhythmically accurate. But I think I'm ready to record. So again, I want to make sure that my metronome is turned on. And then when I hit the red circle, I'm going to hear eight clicks before the recording begins. That gives me time to set my fingers up before I start playing. And then when the playhead reaches the end, I'm going to tap the space bar to stop the recording. Let's give it a try. You can see now it saved what I just played. I can zoom in if I want to get a closer look and I can listen to what I've just recorded. Great. Now, to complete the assignment, you need to create three different bass tracks to record to go on to drum track. Once you have the first one completed, just mute this track. Come back and click on play the synth. Click in the preset box to go back to your guitars and bass guitar sounds. You could use the same sound that you recorded before, or you can choose a different sound. I'm going to close this window because I really don't need it. Again, make sure that the metronome is turned on. And so now I can create maybe a little different sounding bass track. And then I hit the space bar. And again, Soundtrap has captured what I played in real time. Again, we're just looking at data points with these lines and dashes. Now, you just need one more to complete the assignment. So again, I'm going to mute this track. I'm going to come down and click on Play the Synth. Guitar and bass, bass electric, and I think this time maybe I'll change the sound. Um, we'll try this fuzz bass. Yeah. So again, I'll put my playhead at the beginning. I'll leave the window open this time just so you can see what I'm playing on the keyboards. I'm using these black keys over here on the left. So now that I'm ready, I hit record. And then I hit spacebar to stop. And I can go back and listen. I can mute that one and listen to my other bass line. And then listen to the first one. And that's the assignment. 
So I look forward to hearing with what you create, and I hope you have fun uh, experimenting and improvising with these bass sounds and recording your first bass loops in real time.